Grey Hunters represent the point where a space wolf has sort of fully matured, taming his anger and ruthlessness and rage to the point where he understands the importance of patience and cunning. These make up a similar role to tactical squads for the rest of the Space Marines and work as support squads in the modern 40k era. Hello everybody, my name is Spoons Rattling, and we are covering the Grey Hunters of the Space Wolves today, one of the last remaining battle line choices that we have to cover. So the Grey Hunters come in at 85 points for 5, or 170 for 10. They move 6 inches, toughness 4, with a 3 plus save, 2 wounds, leadership 6 plus, and OC2, so a standard Space Marine stat line. In terms of ranged weapons, they of course have a plasma pistol, which at standard is one attack that it's on 3s at 12 inch range, with strength 7, AP 2, and damage 1. You can overcharge, which gives it hazardous, but it also bumps it up to strength 8, AP 3, and damage 2. The bolt gun is 2 attacks that hit on 3s at 24 inch range, with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1, which isn't too interesting, but is useful for killing things like guardsmen. The bolt pistol is 1 attack that hits on 3s at 12 inch range, with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1. Similar to the bolt gun, not too much use, but just a little bit of anti-light infantry punch. The flamer has torrent, ignores cover, d6 attacks that auto hit at 12 inch range, with strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1. This is a fine horde clearing weapon, but there we'll get to how they can deal with that otherwise, where I think this is actually the weakest of the special weapons. The melta gun is melted 2, with two, uh, 1 attack that hits on 3s at 12 inch range, with strength 9, AP 4, and damage d6. A nice little anti-tank sting in the tail, if you will. The Plasma Gun has both standard and overcharged. It's Rapid Fire 1 with 1 attack that hits on 3s at 24 inch range with strength 7, AP 2, and damage 1. If you overcharge it, it gains Hazardous, but goes up to strength 8, AP 3, and damage 2. This is overall a very solid profile for dealing with most kinds of infantry, and is a solid choice overall. The Grav Gun is Anti-Vehicle 2+, plus, 18 inch range with 2 attacks that hit on 3s at strength 5, AP 1, and damage 2. In terms of this weapon, I think it's actually a very solid anti-vehicle weapon for dealing with things like rhinos or uh, uh, trucks, transports, light vehicles, things like that. Moving on to melee weapons, we start off with the close combat weapon, which is a measly two attacks that hit on threes at strength 4, AP 0, and damage 1. A very weak profile on the whole. Next, we move on to the chainsword, which uh, all of them can take, by the way which has three attacks that hit on threes at strength four, AP one, and damage one. Solid anti-light infantry fire, uh, melee, though not the most attacks. The Power Fist has two attacks that hit on threes at strength eight, AP two, and damage two. This is a solid melee weapon that was really, really held back by its low attack count. The Power Weapon has three attacks that hit on threes at strength five, AP two, and damage one. And in a rare case, I think the Power Weapon pulls ahead of the Power Fist just because it has more attacks and Honestly, with what these guys will want to be fighting with, that is going to be the most important thing to help them complete their objective. In terms of abilities, their ability is Cunning Hunters. This unit is eligible to shoot in a turn where it fell back or advanced. While they can't charge after this, this does allow them to advance fairly freely if they don't need to get into melee this turn, which they oftentimes may not, to, may not need to, with their firepower being quite efficient against things like infantry. Next, we are going to move on to the loadout for these units. In terms of their loadout, every model comes standard with a bolt pistol, bolter, and close combat weapon. One Grey Hunter may swap out their bolt pistol for a plasma pistol, and lice a little bit of extra anti-infantry firepower, and any number of models can each equip a chainsword, which is very useful to give them actually decent melee alongside their competent suite of ranged weapons. The pack leader's close combat weapon can be replaced with one of the following, either a power fist or power sword. I would generally take the power sword just because it has a little bit more of a, a few more attacks, which will be useful for what these guys will generally be fighting over the power fist's higher strength. Up to two gray hunters can each have their bolt gun replaced with one of the following, either a flamer, plasma gun, grav gun, or melta gun. I think that these do have their places, mainly the plasma, grav, and melta gun. Since their melee is already quite slanted towards dealing with light infantry, I think the flamer sort of loses its luster compared to its other uh, special weapon contemporaries. Though remember, you don't get any more for bringing extra models, so really you should only run five of these guys. In terms of buffing options, the captain is more of a melee character, so I think he would prefer to be something that's more dedicated melee, where these guys are more of a mixed role unit. The lieutenant gives them lethal hits, which can be powerful on things like plasma guns, though I'd say it was overinvestment, since these guys are mainly for scrapping on objectives and dealing with enemy infantry. They could be surprisingly punchy with a chaplain, but the low attack count is what really holds them back, just because uh, they don't have enough attacks for that plus one to wound to really uh, come back into play. The uh, ancient offers almost nothing, as per usual. Uh, the librarian does give them a four plus invulnerable save, 
but only uh, five models is generally going to limit how tough they can truly be, even with that invulnerable save. The Tech Marine doesn't really lead units that often, um, and I don't think these guys would be worth leading if you are using him to lead a unit. Uh, I believe he would be better with Devastators, um, or even Long Fangs, I suppose, would be the Space Wolves equivalent. The Judiciar does offer them a good buff, and given how they're just Marines, they would like to get the hit first to make sure they don't get whittled down too much. However, again, with the low attack counts, it's kind of over-investment. The Judiciar is far better with something like Bladeguard Veterans, which really do appreciate being able to get the hits first in. The Apothecary, which can only be used outside of champs, isn't super valuable for re reviving these guys and, and doesn't bring any damage. In terms of the uh, Space Wolf specific things, the Iron Pier East is just a reskin to Tech Marine, so the same stuff applies there. Chrome Dragon Gaze uh, gives very mediocre melee, um, and his buffs aren't terribly good, so I would say he's not worth bringing. Ragnar does like being with melee troops, uh, and these guys do have melee, as I mentioned, though they would be better on a high investment unit like Assault Intercessors, or, or rather, on a higher investment unit, it would probably be Blood Cult Laws, and Assault Intercessors would be for a five-man unit of melee for him. Ulrich does have very powerful melee buffs, but again, better on a high investment unit, um, and these guys generally like being just sort of cheap. Uh, they can deal with the infantry very well. No need to give them those sorts of buffs. Uh, the Terminator Wolfguard leader does bring some extra muscle with his power fist and his uh, Cyclone Missile Launcher or whatever their, what other range weapon you bring. Um, but I would say this guy would usually have more use in a place where you're just trying to squeeze out as much damage as possible. And the same things go for the Wolfpack leader himself, but I would say this guy at least has the benefit of not being slightly slower than the squad, which that isn't necessarily a problem. The Terminator can technically just lag an inch behind a couple models, but it's nice to just have all the movement be uniform. Um, and overall, though, he does have a lot less firepower than his Terminator counterpart. Next up is Detachments. And in terms of detachments, they can have access to the standard Space Marine ones and the Champs of Russ. Gladius does allow them to do their grunt work a little more efficiently, efficiently, and they do like the advance and charge, though don't get much else from the rest of the uh, uh, chapter, not chapter tastics, uh, what they're called, doctrines. Uh, Anvil, these guys don't really have much synergy here, as they like to be mobile, and they have no innate heavy weapons, so they don't really get much from this detachment. The rerolls from Iron Storm are nice on melta guns, and they will make decent skirmishers to go in front of your big, uh, mainly vehicle battle line. Firestorm uh, Assault is redundant on them. The extra strength does help turn their special weapons uh, into more dangerous ones, especially melta and plasma come to mind. Uh, advance and charge does mean they can advance for free, since they'll be able to shoot advance and charge all the time, and they have a solid blend of melee and range, so that is a nice thing to have going around. Uh, first Company is a Veterans Detachment, and they are Veterans, and it sucks. The Champs of Russ, um, they do like all the Sagas, uh, and if you can get a few of those going, they will be pretty tough and have very decent melee against most uh, infantry targets, um, and they do bring some decent shooting to a mainly melee army. In terms of competitors, Assault Intercessors come to mind as uh, more melee slanted, um, though the Grey Hunters, I would say, are more of a mixed roll unit than a true melee unit. Um, as these guys will, in a lot of ways, be slightly more effective against uh, light vehicles thanks to their grav guns and melta guns, especially in certain detachments where they can get buffs on those, and even the plasma gun, especially in something like Firestorm. And then their other competitor would mainly be the Blood Claws. If you do want to run a large squad, it's pretty much Blood Claws all the way. Blood Claws will get the same amount of special weapons as these guys, as well as having better melee, as well as buffing the characters that they lead and are cheaper per model. Um, but the main thing is that you can't run Blood Claws in a smaller unit. So if you want a small unit uh, of Space Wolves, then this is pretty much your best bet, as they are the only sort of battle line troop version of a small unit of Space Wolves, which does give them their own niche compared to a unit that's melee hordy like the Blood Claws. In terms of best use, the Grey Hunters do make good grunts. Uh, they have that, but that balance of melee and uh, shooting. Um, their melee will deal with light and medium infantry pretty well, so I generally prefer the Plasma Grav and Melta over the Flamers, just to help them have some more punch against things like vehicles. In general, they're just slightly more dangerous basic Marines, though if you are wanting dedicated melee, uh, their younger variant, the Blood Claws, uh, do pack a generally a lot more melee power. And if wanting melee in five mans, Assault Intercessors do that much better as well, Though these guys work well as a sort of auxiliary flanking unit to take objectives, especially far-flung ones, given how fast they can move every turn. 
though I would never bring a big unit as the extra five marines don't get anything extra. Really, there's not too much to say about the Grey Hunters. They're just a solid unit with a decent blend of shooting and melee that will generally threaten quite a lot of things, though they will struggle, especially against two plus save units or things like Terminators in on the whole. Overall, though, I quite like the Grey Hunters. They're quite a fun unit, even though I don't particularly play Space Wolves. I have used them on Tabletop Simulator a few times. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.